Hi Taurus, welcome to February and happy Valentine's Day. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. So this month we have a full moon in Leo on the 9th. Then Mercury goes retrograde. Well, actually before that we have Valentine's Day, the 14th. Then Mercury goes retrograde on the 16th, a few days after Valentine's. Then we have a new moon in Pisces on the 23rd and that will be favorable to your sign. And it's also favorable to Uranus, so it could bring some surprises. So let's see um, what's coming up for Taurus for the month of February in terms of love and relationships. What does Taurus need to know about love and relationships for the month of February? What does Taurus need to know about love and relationships? in the month of February. The Ace of Wands. New Beginnings. The Nine of Swords. The King of Pentacles, the Four of Swords, the Six of Swords, the Knight of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, the Strength card, the Ten of Cups. Hmm. Okay, so this is interesting. So February is going to be a month of new beginnings for you and you're going to be moving away from difficulty and heartache. You've been worried. You've been dealing with a lot of stress, mental stress in the past. You have this nine of swords. This is a card of worry. This is a card when you're up at night thinking and worrying about someone. There could be, a, and for some of you, you might be worried about someone's health. Um, and your mind is just imagining all these scenarios. Um, because I'm seeing also the Four of Swords, like someone needs rest. Someone is recovering from an illness and they just need to rest. Um, you, but I, you know, and so there could be something like you're deciding to cut away. I feel like you're cutting out things that are not healthy for you, that are not, that haven't been serving you. It even could be relationships. You're cutting things that are toxic away from your life. Um, it could, could be a relationship that has caused you a lot of stress, mental stress. And you're really starting to move on. You have the Six of Swords here. This is a card of moving on, moving away from difficulty, leaving your problems behind. For some of you, it could be some kind of illness. For some, it could be someone that you, you love who's you're worried about. Maybe they're having some mental issues. Um, and part of the reason you're moving away, the King of Pentacles, because you may be, you're looking, okay, you might have already met this person. There might be another person in your life that you're wanting to move toward and leave behind someone that's been very selfish, like this Knight of Swords. It's not, you have these two, these two energies. The Knight of Swords energy is someone who's very reckless, very self, selfish, insensitive, always wanting to, they, they're just concerned with their own agenda. They're not thinking about other people. And sometimes they make decisions, they make hasty decisions that are not always in their best interest. Um, and I feel like you're, you're cutting away from, from this person. Like there's a relationship ending and a new relationship beginning. Because you have this Ace of Wands. Now, the Ace of Wands, it could be a new, a new job or a new career path. It represents opportunity and excitement. It represents like you're ready to take action. There's a new beginning coming. And it could be maybe through this King of Pentacles. Um, that's allowing you to, to break free, to release. So whatever you've been worried about, this new beginning is helping you to overcome that, helping you to get away from your mental stress and your troubles and your 
and helping you to heal from the heartache, whatever you're cutting away. Because you have this Three of Swords here. This is a card of... Um, Sometimes it could be heartache, it could be um, minor surgery, It's but or it could just be a metaphorical cutting away. Like, I'm tired of dealing with toxic people, I'm tired of being in relationships with people that don't value me or aren't giving me what I need, so I'm going to cut that away because I want security. I want what, what is represented by this king of pentacles. This king, and this could be someone that you've already met or it could be someone that you'd like to meet. King of Pentacles is someone who's very stable, could be an earth sign, uh, or have earth in their chart, which would be Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. But this person, he could deal with money, could have uh, have money, is financially abundant. This person could have their own business, they, he could be an entrepreneur, he or she. Um, the cards are not, don't go by the sex, because they could be either sex. Uh, just go by the personality. This king may not be the most exciting person, you know, whereas like the Knight of Swords, they just live on adrenaline. Um, but he's stable. And that's what you're looking for now. You want something stable. You're tired of this, these exciting guys or girl, you know, relationships, I should say, that are a lot of fun, a lot of excitement, but they bring you a lot of grief at the same time when they don't bring you a lot of stability. I think you're getting tired of that. If you've dealt with that in the past, you're ready for something different now. You're ready for a new beginning where you can, but a part of you is worried about it. Like you're afraid to make this transition. Um, but I feel like with these two nines, um, you're coming to the end of a cycle. And especially with the six of swords and the 10 of cups as an outcome, you are moving toward a better future. Um, but you still have to get through the severing, the severing of ties. And this is in your negative thinking sector. You're worried about it. Um, you know, you know what you need to do, you know what you need to cut from your life, but you're worried about it. Like you don't, it's, it's one thing to think about it. It's another thing to actually do it because it's difficult breaking a relationship or severing ties with people. Um, but you may feel like it's necessary for your sanity or for your health, at least for your mental health. Um, so this king can represent someone very stable. He brings financial security. He brings, he loves the home and family and he's looking for that kind of connection too. As a matter of fact, it could be someone, here's the nine of pentacles. This person could be someone who is very successful in what they're doing. They have a good home. They have a, a stable job. They might even be working in their own business in some way where they have a lot of autonomy, they have a lot of independence. and But they're feeling lonely. I, I'm, I always sense a loneliness with this Nine of Pentacles because no matter what they have, material, because the Pentacles always, they love material things. It makes them feel safe and secure. But they're realizing, and this could be you too, but I feel like it's also your partner or the person that is in your environment. Um, so you could be doing well at... Your job, there could be a new job opportunity that comes in that, that brings you more financial security. And now you're going to be focusing on, well, what about love? What about relationship? Where, you know, I, it's not enough to have material things. It's not enough to have a beautiful home, a nice car, nice clothes. I want someone like, I want to share my life with, I want to share my wealth and abundance with someone. I want to be able to do things and go places and have a buddy or a partner. So this energy, you could be, this is a quick energy. So you could be moving quickly uh, away from one relationship and moving quickly toward a new beginning. It could be a career opportunity. It could also be a relationship. It could even be that you meet someone through a career opportunity. Like you're working and through your, your job, you somehow connect with someone that turns out to be a romantic partner. Because, so now in your wish fulfillment sector, you have this, um, the lion, you have the strength card. So you're going to have to call upon your strength to deal with what you're leaving behind. Because I feel like this night, it might give you problems, you know, when you actually finally make the decision to walk away, you may have to deal with this person 
and they might have some anger issues. You might be leaving someone, if you've never seen it before, you might start to see um, someone who's wanting to do battle, someone who is wanting to fight for you. Once they realize, like, this is it, she's really leaving, or he's really leaving. Um, and this person has trouble controlling their emotions. They go to extremes of emotion. Um, this could also be you learning how to, this is a card about taming the beast, taming the beast within. So you could be working, helping someone else find, you know, deal with self-control and having some mental stress that they need to regulate. It could also be within you, not going to extremes of emotion. That if you want to achieve your goal, you're going to have to do it in a more calmer approach. Whereas, like, a lot of times Taurus is very patient. You know, we put up with a lot, and we take, we say yes, and we take, we don't know how to say no, and we, and we, you know, people do this and pisses us off, and we keep, yeah, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it. And then you reach a point where you just can't, that's it. You know, it's like you're, you reach the limit, and then Taurus just explodes. You know, <laughs> okay, when you've pushed us beyond the limit, then you just, like, re react and, and erupt. You don't want to get to that stage. So you want to have more of an even, you know, let your anger out in increments or learn how to say no, learn how to set boundaries so you don't reach that point where you just explode and say, that's it, I'm done, you know? <laughs> so the way you're going to reach your goal in love and in relationship is by through self-control, controlling your emotions. And if even if that means going through some type of counseling or therapy to deal with all this mental stress, to deal with what you know you need to do, because there are certain things that need to be cut away. But there's potential here with this king. And look at the ten. The ten of cups is the outcome. This is the the love card, the family harmony card. This is like the end. Like, you know, when you wanted something that you've always wanted your entire life is to be in a loving relationship where you feel supported and protected. That's this ten of cups where you're just surrounded by love. So there's someone that's wanting to bring you love in February. And there could be some exciting new beginnings that are going to make you wake up and realize, I have to leave this toxic. If you're in a toxic relationship, or if you're in a relationship that's not serving you, and this could even be career, but um, it could be both. It's time to cut it out. It's time to stop letting people drain you. And it's time to connect with the people who are going to be there for you and going to support you. So that's what you're going to be doing. There's new beginnings coming to us. So let's see what the astrology has to say. So for you, there's a full moon happening in your fourth house. It's also, so the moon's in the fourth, the sun's in the tenth house. So something is completing at home. Like maybe you've moved, you're, you know, um, finishing up some projects, some work that it has to do with home and family. Um, but also career. The tenth house is your status, your career. Um, it's in the spotlight now. And with Leo, um, with the moon in Leo, you're really feeling like I need to be me. I need to create, you know, to show, I need to do something more creative. I need to express who I really am. Um, I'm tired of, you know, that cool, you might even be involved with something that has to do with technology because the, Aquarius is in the 10th house. Um, but you really, are, you're going to get some kind of recognition. I think you're getting recognition for your skills, your talents in technology, but you're also learning how to create a stable home life for yourself, to make your home um, something that expresses who you are, something that allows you to be you, you know, and you're not, because Leo is about Creative self-expression. Leo's about this is me and, you know, being noticed, being recognized for your talent. You have Mars in the 8th house. So that could bring, sometimes it could bring an unexpected expense, but it also brings financial support. So I feel like your expenses might be high in February, but you're going to be making money too because you're going to be working um, on resources. Where can I get more money? How can I bring more money in? So you might be figuring out maybe um, how to get a business loan or how to get financial support through a bank or how to bring in more money through maybe your partner's income. 
Um, I think you're going to be concerned about, now that the eighth house is also about confronting your demons, confronting your fears about intimacy, um, taking action to bring more intimacy into your life. So there could be someone that's activating, uh, you know, if you haven't had an intimate partner in a while, something could be happening in February. Neptune and Mercury are in your 11th house. So you're, it's a kind of a confusing time um, when it comes to friendships. You're not really sure who your friends are. But now is not the time to make a decision about that because Mercury's retrograding. Mercury's going to go retrograde in the middle of February. And you can evaluate everything and look at, you know, consider what's there, but you're not gonna, don't make any major decisions. Um, the, the one thing that good, that's good about the 11th house with Mercury and Neptune and Pisces, if you wanted to do anything that involves creative self-expression, like writing or music or art, you could be connecting with creative groups of people where you're expressing yourself more. Um, you're showing your talents. You're getting an opportunity to show your gifts. And people are seeing that. You're becoming more visible. Um, the North Node is in your third house, and Mercury is trining it. So communication is going to be good for you. Maybe you need to um, reach out to your friends and relatives more. Communicate with them. Reconnect with them. With Mer That's the thing. With Mercury going retrograde in the 11th house, you might be connected with friends you haven't seen in a long time. And they might be friends that bring fun into your life. Maybe you've been so focused on work or focused on worry. Um, you haven't really had enough time for fun. I feel like fun is going to be coming back into your life in February. And um, you might even think about broadening your horizons like travel or going back to school, learning, picking up some new skills um, that can actually transform your life in some way. But um, Mars being the energizer, it's going to be in your eighth house. So maybe this time you're saying, you know what, I want more intimacy in my life. I want people that I can really connect with. I don't want superficial friends or superficial uh, lovers. I want someone that I can have a soul connection with. And with Mercury Retrograde, you might be rethinking some people from the past. Maybe you're reconnecting with some people from the past. Friends. Friendship could turn into love. Um, if there is a friend that comes in, um, it could be someone that's very romantic. This is with the Pisces energy. Someone who's a good communicator, someone's very romantic, someone may want to charm you or sweep you off your feet. Um, but be careful with that Neptune energy. When it's not involving with art uh, or creativity, it can be deception and illusion. So make sure you're seeing people for who they are in February. Don't, you know, have rose-colored glasses on, especially if you're meeting someone new. Now, the new moon in Pisces is happening in the 11th house. Um, so you have an opportunity to create a new beginning with maybe some friends that you have, a, a friendship. Uh, maybe a new, you, you belong to a new group, or you find a new group of friends, or you reconnect with some old friends. Like I said, you can have a new beginning with them, a new relationship. Maybe you're uh, reconnecting with someone you haven't seen in a long time. Um, by this, by this new moon, Mars will be in the ninth house. So... Mars, you may feel like traveling. You might feel like getting out of your comfort zone. You might feel like teaching or learning or taking action, um, communicating on a global level. Uh, you might be focusing on your career, Mars and Capricorn in the ninth. You, you might be thinking like, okay, I need, I need some new skills. If I want to achieve a goal or a dream, I need to learn new skills or ex you know, expand my knowledge in some way so I can get ahead. Um, and Mars is trining the North Node in Cancer. So it's giving you the energy to figure out what do I need to feel nurtured. Are my in the third house is the house of communication. It's also the house of siblings and relatives and neighbors. So maybe you need to be a little bit more nurturing, you know, connecting with people. Maybe you've isolated yourself too much and you need to get back out there and reconnect with people and reconnect with family uh, because you need that kind of nurturing right now. Now, Uranus is in your first house, and this new moon is sextiling Uranus in your first house. So you're going through some major changes. It's going to take, um, 
Uranus is going to be in your first house for seven years. But so you're going to be going through this feeling, you're going to have this period of restlessness where you feel like something's got to change. I have to make change. And with this new moon in Pisces, it, it's an opportunity for a new beginning for you to achieve a dream that you've always had or a goal that you've always had. Um, you're going to be shaking things up in February, and it could start with this new moon where you start to feel that energy like I've got to shake things up. I've got to make changes. Um, there could be some surprises. Someone, maybe one of your friends surprises you. Um, you can't really predict what's going to happen with Uranus because it's unpredictable. It's something that happens out of the blue, comes out, you know, it's something that you least expect. All of a sudden, here it is. So you could all of a sudden, you know, you run into someone you haven't seen in a long time and they offer you this amazing opportunity. Or you join a group of friends or you, you join this group and it leads to a positive change in your life in some way. You have Venus in the 12th house and it's squaring Jupiter at this new moon in the 9th. Now Venus squared Jupiter is not a bad, um, Venus and Jupiter are benefics. So they're not bad even when they have difficult transits, you know, when they're, when they're in square opposition, they're not, they don't bring tragedy or suffering or anything like that or any, what people might consider bad luck or difficult times. The only thing that you'd have to watch out for is overdoing it, overspending, taking on more than you can handle. So, um, you know, you might even have with Venus in the 12th, you might feel love for someone and you're not communicating. You have the secret love where you have to keep it hidden for some reason. So don't get involved in any um, secretive or, you know, covert relationships that have to be, you know, if something can't be out in the open, it probably isn't, something you want to be involved in because it, Venus is murky in the 12th house. Um, but it will be moving into Aries at this, it'll be in Aries at this new moon. So there could be that you feel like um, when Venus moves into Aries, it's not really comfortable in the sign of Aries because Aries is about war and Venus is about love and peace. So there's a tension there. Um, but you may feel more selfish like, I want the love I deserve. You know, I'm not going to put up with a relationship that's not giving me what I need. So you're not going to be the martyr anymore. You're going to be like, no, I want what I deserve. I want a guy or, or a girl or a partner who's going to give me, um, give back. If I give my love, I want to be loved back. And that's what you don't settle in February. But I feel like that there are going to be um, new beginnings coming up. So here's the energy I'm, I'm sensing. You're going to get to a point where you're tired of being the one who's always giving. If you've been surrounded by takers, by people who don't value you or don't appreciate your love or the gifts you have to offer, you may finally decide, you know what, enough is enough. I'm tired of this. I don't want it. And you're going to start cutting people out of your life. But that's going to make room for this new beginning to bring people that can bring you this wonderful love and support that you've always wanted because you made the decision not to settle for less than what you deserve. So there might be some mental stress around it because, you know, Taurus, we don't like change. But you're going to come to a point where you realize change is necessary. I have to do it. And I have to, you know, bring... I have to get rid of things that are no longer serving me so that I can allow and create room for true love to come in for new beginnings that are serving me to come in. And you can have that in February, at least the beginning stages. And there could be some surprises around new projects, new love relationships, new friendships, um, but it looks good. You can overcome a lot of psychological blocks around love in February where you allow love to come in and you stop being um, the martyr in a relationship, in love relationships, where you're giving, giving, giving and not getting anything back. That, those days are over. Taurus is drawing a line in the sand in February. And anyone who's been taking advantage of your kindness is going to be shown the door. Just kick them to the curb. Because you've got, you don't want to cast your pearls before swine in February. You want to wait for the person that can give back and give you the love and the happiness that you deserve. So Taurus, this is where I'm going to end it here because it, I think it looks good. Just don't be afraid to sever what you know you need to sever. And I want to say um, 
Thank you for everyone who's been supporting my channel through commenting, through liking. If you like this video, click on the like button, subscribe, so you'll always know when these videos come out. And for those who are, who have been ordering readings, thank you for your support. For those who've been leaving comments, thank you for taking the time. I love reading them. And if you're new, welcome. Uh, if you'd like a private reading that's based strictly on your situation, click on the link in the description box. We'll get you on the schedule and we'll be uh, working on your specific problem. This is a general reading. Um, the readings that you purchase will be specifically geared toward you. So have a wonderful February. Happy Valentine's Day. May you have much love and romance in the month of February. You deserve this love. Don't settle. It's there for you. So have a wonderful February. I'll talk to you again next month. Okay, bye.